Welcome everyone to the Trinidad Antonio Film Festival 2021 Q&As. I'm Rina. Thanks for joining us. Feel free to comment and ask any questions you have for the filmmakers and we'll try to answer them during the session. We would also like to thank all our TTFF 21 sponsors and partners. NGC is our signature sponsor this year, and we have leading sponsorship from Shell Trinidad and Tobago and Republic Bank Limited, as well as contributing and supporting sponsorship from the NLCB and Sport and Culture Fund, respectively. All right, so today I have Tatiana Fernandez, and she is here representing her film, Santo Domingo Waltz. Good evening, Tatiana. How are you? Hi, I'm great. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to have you. So we're going to dive right in, okay? So, Tatiana, the film is called Santo Domingo Waltz, and it is a documentary that follows the lives of three young professional dancers, Ramundo, Victor, and Angel. Why did you make this documentary? I wanted to look at the macho culture in my country and how that dictates the gender roles and what boys are supposed to do and girls are supposed to do. Uh, which is something I've been hearing all the time since I've been growing up. I, I used to play basketball and it was only with boys. And then I used to we go to dance lessons and it was only girls. So like from a young age, I'm always listening to girls can do this, girls can do this. And so I wanted to look at it from the other point of view and see what it is like for a boy to have someone say to them, boys can't do this. So these three boys, who are 13 and 14 when I start documenting their lives, uh, they want to dance ballet. And it's like not well seen here for a boy to be doing that. That's just for girls, supposedly. Okay. And why did you choose those particular boys to document? I have a, a friend who's uh, their teacher at the dance school, and she was telling me, oh, you have to come and see. There are so many stories to tell there. And she told, started talking about some of the kids that go there and she said and then there's this class when there's like 20 girls and there's only three boys and I was like that one mm -hmm. I want to meet those I want to see what because I could get a feeling of them in this feminine space and then them three being like standing out and struggling and trying to do their thing <laughs> <laughs> All right. So in the film, you ask the young men to express their view on the terms masculine and feminine in dance. What was your intention behind this? I was uh, shooting. I, I wanted to do a choreography at, uh, at the end, which is at the end of the film. Um, and so I was thinking, oh, I'm going to go document the rehearsals. Uh, and when I started going, I would see that for the improv exercises, the teacher was asking these questions and they were responding with their bodies. And it just hit me, I was like, oh wait, actually I think this is a great way to interview them and they can respond with their bodies because they're dancers. Uh, and since the, I wanted to, to look into anything that was gender related. So when they, every time they would mention something like masculine, oh, what's masculine, what's feminine, and then and to see what they thought about it, and then trying to pick exercises with their teacher that would help talk about the topic. And so, like at that that exercise, they're like switching roles. So, like instead of dancing how the men dance in ballet, they're dancing how the women dance. So, which is also like ballet being kind of a mirror of how society works, where they also have like assigned roles and they carry the women. Kind of like also in, in society. So, yeah. so when you kind of get out of that, which is what you're supposed to be doing, it, it can also be very confusing. Yes, yes. One of the boys, interestingly, expressed that the man is like a mattress in dance. Um, tell the viewers what he meant. Yeah, exactly. So it's that. It's like you're supposed to be there for them. You're supposed to support the woman. Hold the woman. Don't let the woman fall. She's a fragile creature. <laughs> so it's like they're also like assuming like, no, I have to be the man. I have to hold her and 
protect her. So it's like it all just comes back to like the same idea. Okay, nice, <laughs> nice. All right. So um, these terms came out um in the documentary "gay" for skinny. These words were given to the boys to express and dance how they feel when they hear these words. What was this exercise or why was this exercise done? I wanted to get to the part where they tell me, because I already knew beforehand that they were all at the beginning told not to do it because that's for gays. Mm. Um, so I was trying to find a way where they could tell me without it being too obvious. And so I was just asking, uh, telling the teacher to ask them, words that they had heard at the beginning of why they shouldn't be dancing and that they would need, need to like represent them with their body movements. Um, and and then at the, they all, at the end, they all got to the same word, like all three of them on their own, they're like gay, gay, gay. Like, mm -hmm. so we just talk about that, how they had different experiences, but at the end, they, they were so similar. All right. Okay. And at the end, the boys danced in their surroundings. What was the significance of that? It was very beautiful at the end. But what, what was the significance of that? Well, they start out at the... Um, first, I wanted to show the city, like Santo Domingo. You get glimpses of it in the film, but then at the end, you actually see uh, more of the city. So you can see they're dancing around their neighborhoods. So you finally get to see more of where they actually come from, which also helps you see their background and how in that particular background it's it's, uh, it's harder to be a, dan a man who dances uh, ballet and also it was just like at the end it's they start dancing at the, in the classroom and then they come out and they have you can see that they've grown and they've learned how to express more and they're dancing better and they're free and they're just like oh everybody could just like go oh, screw themselves i'm gonna do whatever i want so they have like this attitude and they're showing the world this is me and i'm doing it and you spend a lot of time with these boys since 2017 as you told yeah. me before like um how would you describe each boy now there's a common thread they're similar in some ways, but they're very different at the same time. Yes. So how would you describe them? They're so, they're so different that I think that outside of a, a school setting, I don't think they would have become friends at all. Wow. Like, I don't think it would have happened. And um, well, Raimundo is very determined, very talented. He mm -hmm. is so focused on achieving his dream of being a dancer. And he's getting there. He's like he's evolved so much in these last four years that I've known him. Getting scholarships, going to dance camps. Yeah. He's he's doing really well. Um, and then Angel is very shy and also more like a, like you can tell that each of them sometimes have their own macho way of thinking and expressing themselves, even though they struggled with it before. Everybody, we all kind of do it at the end because we grew up in a macho country and we all can have macho attitudes toward everything. Um, and he's shy. I could relate to him a lot because I'm also very shy and I could see him struggling when I would interview him and he would be like, oh, like, hard to talk to him and I could relate to him so much. Um, and then Victor is very interested in fashion and uh, mm -hmm. hip hop music. Yeah. He wants to be a singer. He's always changing his outfit and his hair. <laughs> um, so yeah, they're just like completely different. Yes. And also about Angel, I was excited because I wanted to show baseball is a big thing here. So mm -hmm. I was very excited to show a boy who is playing baseball on the streets and dancing ballet at the same time. Just like I was playing basketball and dancing ballet at the same time when I was his age. So I wanted to show that what what was what was really great, Tatiana? You you should not only show them in school dancing, but you gave a holistic view. We had the opportunity to see their parents. Um, one um young man, we saw his mother in the salon, and you talked about the parents of the other boys. Now, um, would you say for each of them there were different levels of support, and how did that impact each young man? They were. Um... 
Yeah, they were supported by their families to do this, which is very important. I know, like, one of them at the beginning was kind of like, no, we don't want you going there. But And then the grandma was supportive and the mom not so much. Yeah. But then eventually she came around and they're like, he has the whole support of his family, which is like, if you don't have that and everybody else is telling you not to do it, and even your family, then it's way harder to succeed. But yeah, they have a strong support system, and you could see also Raimundo uh, as the support of his teachers. So he's like, he's in practicing and support of the teachers, correcting him in dance. Well, you can also see that uh, Angel is trying to sing, but doesn't have like instructions or a clear support or someone to guide him down that field. Yeah. So you can see that he's not going to be as successful as Raimundo has with all the support that he's mm -hmm. found along the way. Yeah. All right. And Tatiana, you are beautifully represented. Santa Domingo. And you even show the culture at the beginning. Tell me about that game <laughs> at the beginning of the documentary. Is that yeah. the thing in Santo Domingo? Yeah, I mean, I had I hadn't seen it, but I had heard about it. I have heard uh, the like the slippery pole. Uh, so it's a contest to try to get to the top, and then they have the salami in this circumstance. I mean, I think maybe another. They don't necessarily always have a salami, but this time they had salami, and they it, it was very much like a a context of the culture. Like this is what men are supposed to be doing. You know, they're supposed to be strong and like competitive and like getting a salami, which is very much a like a penis shaped object. So yeah. it's very much like a masculine. Thing and competition and show off kind of thing. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, unfortunately, they did not grab the salami and win the prize, which I don't. I'm not really sure what it was, but <laughs> it was fun to watch. <laughs> well, Tatiana, this was a great film. Thank you so much for joining us. But before um, you leave us, I want to hear about your future projects. Like, what can we see from you again? I'm so excited to just see more work from you. I'm just starting to develop a new documentary film, and it's going to go about my grandma my, and my great-grandma. They used to own a movie theater Ooh. in a small town here in Dominican Republic. Uh, so I'm going to look into like their lives and my life and how I'm a filmmaker now and how that movie theater was like a family business and passed down for generations and then also, my grandma's love stories um, and the love letters I found when she passed away. So, kind of like trying to like reconstruct there this um, family history. Oh, that sounds really good, and I look forward to seeing it in the future. That's all the time we have, Tatiana. Thank you so much for joining us, and you. your film is going to do so well in the festival. <laughs> all right. Uh, Thanks everyone for joining us for this Q&A. Don't forget, you can still catch all of these great films as they are screening today. So check out the ttfilmfestival.com website where you can find all the information on how to buy tickets and check out the films coming up as well. All right, Tatiana, thank you so much. That was an interview.